I like Pearl playing um, Totoro in there. As you do. And Jude's singing. <laughs> Jude's, Jude's into it. Okay. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to another day with the Norps. Um, it is another chapter in the saga of the family room. Now this right? is the this is like the super exciting love story part. Really? Well, it's the part I've been the most excited about. For... Between you and me? Yeah. I thought that's actually about what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. Uh, you were like, I don't follow. <laughs> No, this is where Mike is going to start on our bookshelves, our built-ins that are going on either side of our fireplace. And really, you guys, if you've been around for any amount of time, you probably know that I'm obsessed with books. And this is true. Lots of little things you could it's put on problem. bookshelves. Get help. Stop it. Get some help. So I'm so excited about this. And this is like probably next to the kitchen. The thing I'm the most excited about in our whole house project. It's also physically next to the kitchen, so that's that's convenient. You're right, you're right. Have we showed the design what you're thinking of for this yet? We probably haven't, but well, we've talked about the it idea a lot. is we're going to do some built-in bookshelves on either side of the uh, fireplace, and so, but we don't even have the plywood yet for that. So we're going to get the plywood. This is step one. Yes, and get then the hopefully materials. I can start cutting today and see. All right, over here at the warehouse, I've got. Plywood stacked up right here. Five sheets of it, one on the workbench, ready to be cut down. We're basically gonna go through, cut a bunch of planks down to 11 and three quarters. That's the depth of the, the shelves. Should be, I think, fairly simple. We'll see. shelves over there at the warehouse but Megan is attempting to figure out paint colors. So what do you think Megan? Okay well. How about these colors? So in the photo that I just tore down I will put it on the screen right now. Is there space over here? There is now. Um, I noticed that the shelves that I liked that were painted cream because I really wanted them to be a color but I realized that I had a lot of colors going on and that they probably needed to stay light for light you know, so they would reflect more light. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that it seemed like they had a slightly tinted back. And I mm. think in that one, it's kind of a bluish. And so I thought if I went and got the lightest version of that green. The green that's over there in the hallway. Yeah, then it would translate to be kind of like that there and um, give some dimension in the room. Mm -hmm. But right now, this is when I, the first time I've tried to decide on the color. Now I'm wondering if, I just want to leave it alone. What do you mean? And just do it all the same color? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wonder if it might just be a little too much. It might be a little too competitive yeah, or so busy. I just changed my mind. I'm not going to do it. Okay, so the all the, the, the shelves in the back will all be the same color. Yes. And, and they are what going color? To be, well, that's the next question. I was going to paint them the same cream that's in there that I really like. In the kitchen. Okay. Yes, but what's interesting, do you guys remember in the kitchen when I did the gray first, it was super dark in there. The kitchen. Right. Like the gray looked really dark. 
But then you see that gray in here. This is what the gray looks like on a piece of furniture. It looks less dark, right? It almost looks like cream. Mm. And so I guess my worry is if I do that cream, because there's so much light coming in, mm. will it just be look kind of washed out? Yeah. So I'm not sure yet. I might do, I might do that. I have a ton of it. That's a pretty color. Yeah, it's really pretty. Maybe I will do that. I, I have like a ton that of color. It. Mike likes it because we got a ton of it, right? Yeah, and when you say, as soon as you say that, I'm like, yes, we should definitely use that. Because it doesn't play too dark. Have we already said this is a piece of furniture you're selling? Yeah, they, she was gonna come today, but she has to come tomorrow. Okay. This already is feels fairly close to this color. Remember, this was the the point that where it was really dark, and um, because this is kind of a little dark corner, and so it played like medium gray, not light gray. Mm. But this. Don't mind the mess that's all over the place, by the way. I made a very delicious dinner. You did make a good dinner. Homemade tortillas. Barbacoa. Barbacoa. It was so yummy. Good. So anyways, we'll see, but I'm leaning towards doing, and I can do a different color. I don't have to do either one of those. I just have a lot of that because I got it to the kitchen and after one coat realized, or two coats, it was too dark, so. Many days later. Not really? Well, it took a while, but like two days to build these. Yeah, you no, it's fast. been like a week. So we have this one, which is ready for Megan to sand. This one, which is almost done, I've got to do all the little holes for the shelves. We have. A, I had a little jig that I used. I did a little jig, and then I got a little jig that helps me drill all these holes. Do a little jig. So they line up, and you do can. A little jig. You can have your um, adjustable shelves. I'm very, very, very excited about this. This is the kind of thing I literally dream about. Well, <laughs> I don't think I literally dream about it. I you kind of you daydream about. Yeah, about. Yeah, you're excited yeah. about. We have over here, we're going to put this paneling type backing on it. See that? Megan's going to paint that as well. Just that'll be... Match the kitchen backsplash. Right, that'll be in the back. So we're making progress. Hopefully so we can... we stand and paint today. Um, we should be able, well, I mean, definitely this one is ready to be sanded and painted in its entirety. I've got to do the holes over there, but yeah, I mean, but there's still a few more steps. I have to, I have to build a little frame that they're going to sit on. We're moving forward. We're going to get there. So look, we got it loaded up. We're going to take the first one over to the house and see how it looks. In the house? Think, Megan? Well, we want it to be fill the floor to ceiling. Mm -hmm, which it so will. We'll put a six inch box on the bottom mm -hmm. that sits on, and then a six inch box on the top. Is that right? Yeah, it'll be it'll be a little less than six. So about another foot, because you got to have room for the baseboard to go along the bottom, and then the crown to go along the top. Made the box that is going to go underneath so that it can go sit well you know sit on top of it. now we're going to need to attach this this is the kind of thing that i didn't know about before we started working on things how complicated getting things level is <laughs> okay eva's our camera person all right here we go oh <laughs> Okay. Is that pushed back a little 
boy? Well, it's running into the outlet right now. Oh, that's what it is. The outlet thing. So we that have looks to... good. Much better than when it was sitting on the floor. It's gonna look so good. So we'll put trim in here, fill the box up here, and then put the crown up there, and then have it on both sides. But it looks really good, babe. You're building something that's really gonna last in this house, which is cool. Okay, Mike cut the hole for the outlet, and we decided we'll actually just move the outlet out and put it in here. Got, got that one okay. So I think what I can do is I can just, I can just pull that out and put it back in on top of that, I think. <laughs> I like pro playing um, Totoro in there. As you do. And Jude's singing. <laughs> Jude's, Jude's into it. Okay. All right, so we're gonna see. He pulled it through. So now he can just Make that the well, outlet. This screws are long enough. Okay. Wow. Okay. Look at that. Like it was meant to be there. Good job, babe. All right. I moved the sofa back into place and the rug back. And honestly, my natural inclination is like, man, we should be painting these a color. But I'm really trying to hold myself back from doing that because I don't want it to be too, I don't know. It just seems like it, I shouldn't do it a color, but I'm kind of freaked out about doing it essentially gray. So I'm just gonna paint a little bit on so I can have a sample to think about over the next few days. That's a pretty color though. It's called, it's from Joanna Gaines line, Magnolia at Lowe's and it's called Gatherings. It's like a really warm, gray and there's so much light coming in during the day and hitting this wall that it doesn't look very dark. It looks a little bit warmer on, or less green in real life. It looks a little bit more uh, redder. I put my favorite newer painting in there. This is a like a paint by numbers, but it's very well done. The colors are Perfect. And um, I just love paint by numbers when they're, well, at least when they're well done like this one, because I love like kind of like the naive, what is that word? Naive, I don't know how you say it. Naiveness of it or naive, naivete of it. But also I wanted to put it there to kind of, um, I like the grays that are in it, the warm grays. I think that's gonna be really pretty because it's enough of a difference from the creamy white on the walls. And then that, remember, we'll do the crown and the, the baseboards in that color as well. And you can see it, I did a little bit on the face here and on the side. Um, yeah, that'll look really pretty. I don't like how everything's gray now, but I also think that like beige or grayish does have a place too. So um, I think that'll be really pretty. And then I get my books and the little things that we put on the shelves will really be able to shine. And also no matter what I'm into at the time, it works and I think it also works with the grout here on the fireplace. I'm not sure yet what, how much of this I'm painting. So I'm leaving this for sure, this centerpiece wood. I have to decide this piece right here on the sides. It's not like the wood is incredible or anything, you know, um, but also the lady that had it for me, she just put like these big holes in it to attach it. And it's a little, I have to figure that out. And so I'm thinking of actually just painting that to match a painting at that gray color and then only leaving this. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's better to have the whole width of it or if it's okay if I just paint these two to match everything else in the space? What are you working on, Babelicious? Oh, so another side project. I've been working on getting this a slide project door. <laughs> the pocket door in. I realized that when I installed this way back when we were at the framing stage that I should have installed this frame at the finished floor height instead of on the subfloor. Anyway, so it just means that the little guides that are supposed to keep it sort of in place are down below where it touches. Mm. So I had to like Jimmy rig up a thing here with some other... <laughs> Anyways, we'll see if this works, but I'm trying to get this working. So Dad finished the door. This is so that we have the ability to close to our little laundry space. Yeah, pretty sweet. 
And we bought this door at the thrift store for $25. It was the first door we bought for the house. And we kind of based all our other doors off of it because it's solid wood. It looks good. It makes the space feel very different to have that there. I guess almost in a way smaller because when it's open, you can see all the way to our bedroom, but that's exactly, we wanted to have a double door before our bedroom. But I kind of like it. It makes this feel more like a dead end. So it's cozier. It's the next day and I, my finger looked red in that, but it's not. I have been looking at this. I feel very nervous about it, as I always do with paint. I don't know why I act like the stakes are so high, but I do. The funny thing is, I posted the video of getting our new furniture today, and several of you were talking about how, like, it looks terrible, there's way too many patterns and colors. And the funny thing is, the reason I'm nervous about this paint is not because I'm afraid it doesn't match or something, it's because I think it's too neutral. I actually want more colors and patterns in my room, so I'm just gonna keep going with that because I have been very happy. Some people said this rug was too busy. I have been very happy with everything. I love lots of pattern. And if you haven't noticed around here, I'm all about doing what, you know, makes me feel like lots of joy here in my home. But I'm gonna go ahead and start painting this. Even though it doesn't have all the trim and stuff, the trim should be easy to paint. I'm just gonna put the first coat here on the bookshelves. Well, on the, the bookcase. The shelves are outside. I can do the coat on, start painting those too. But I'm a little nervous. I hope it's not too dark but I'm gonna do it because I've been through it a million times. Like, well, if you did paint it a color, what color? And is that really what you wanna do? And I don't wanna go just like white or cream cause I don't want it to just disappear. So I'm gonna hope that once it's all done and then I put my plants and my books and my things in it, that it, it makes sense to me. First coat is done, it's a little splotchy, but one good thing, because the thing I was most concerned about is how dark it looked. I wondered if it was just because of the contrast between the paint and the white, bright white primer. And indeed it was because now it looks a lot better. Um, more of what I was thinking it was gonna look like. It's more like a mushroomy grayish. So I think that'll look really nice. I'll let that do its thing. Mike's outside sanding the other shelves and once, because they've just been primed, once those are all done, we'll be able to bring those in and I'll be able to paint those and then all the shelves. And then the hardest part will be waiting the week before I put anything in there while the paint uh, cures. Thankfully, this paint is just a seven day cure because some paints are like 30 days before you should really put anything on them. And I always do, but this time I vowed I would not. So I will have to have a full week before I can make a fun video of filling these bookshelves up. I can't believe it's happening. The boys just brought in the other bookcase and it really makes a difference in the room because I, I think this area of the room was kind of disappearing, like it didn't even exist. Like rooms can do that for some reason, spaces can. And now it pulls everything that direction and establishes this space as a space. It makes it feel bigger, oddly enough. So very happy with that. And once we get it all done, I think even more it will establish it as a space because it will pull all the color together and make it really uniform. If you're wondering why I placed it where I did, in part is I wanted it centered on this window. I like symmetry, so I wanted it to be exactly the same and mirrored over there. And then I wanted a space here for walking. And then I needed it to end, because originally I thought I would just do this whole wall. But then I realized that we need this space right here to be empty. So we had to end it here and it just kind of then went the way it went, but I'm happy with it now. Okay, so the next thing Mike's doing here is he built this, he just stacked a couple well, two I by fours. Stacked a couple two by fours. Now we're, put, we're attaching to the top. So we have something to, we're gonna put a, like a piece of trim piece on up front and then we're gonna put the crown on that. On that. Next thing we're trying to do is the boys, the kids like to play on the Xbox on the weekends, but we don't want to have it visible. And so Mike is going to. Well, I already kind of did. Put, he's made this little hole to snake the cord up so we can keep it down here. Well, we can plug it in there, but the HDMI needs to go up to the TV. And so we're going to take the TV down and leave it down until we have finished this whole thing. Right. But I've already taken a shower and gotten in my PJs, so I don't know who's going to help you. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so Mike just drilled a hole in this. Also, it's fun. I got this at Home Depot. Just goes on like that. I'm not gonna put this on yet, but once the cord's going through, I'll put this on and it makes a nice, not that anyone's ever gonna see it because it's behind the TV, but makes you I feel know. better. And also I put one on the hole and, and that's in the, in the um. And then we're gonna the snake thing. the cord through. And yes, I know that my TV looks ugly up there, but we actually watch movies as a family all the time and yeah, there's nowhere else to put great. it. I would love to have one of those art TVs. So, you know, anybody want to send me one for Christmas, I'm into it. In the meantime, that's our TV and we use it. We use it a lot. Yeah. We watch movies as a family at least once a week. We're such a good or, No, or like shows or YouTube videos. We like to watch things together. And so that's why we have a big honking ugly TV up there. Okay, it's the next morning and I just sanded this. So you can see I have the sander right there. And now we have something to, uh, to do. Right here, these quarters don't come together perfectly, which is hard to do with, um, what is this stuff called? Plywood. Plywood. At a 45 degree angle. Yeah. We are going to take some Bondo and fill that in and then let it dry and a little bit later we'll sand it some of the spots are bigger than others like there's a few different things we could have done we could have done like put some more trim over that we could have filled it with caulking but i want it to be a sharp corner so that it just comes boom boom caulking wouldn't have given us that so we're gonna try bondo yeah. the thing about bondo is it's you got to work fast it's it's kind of scary to work fast with something that dries that quickly. So we're going to do our best. Well, we'll just do a little bit at a time. I don't think we'll be able to fill all of it okay. at once. Okay, Mike, I've never used Bondo before. I've only used it a couple times. It's pretty simple, though. You scoop out a dollop, put a little bit of the cream hardener in it, mix it up, and then you spread it. Get it spread. It starts to harden. Ooh, it smells. Yeah, it has a very strong chemical smell. All right, let the spreading begin of the Bondo. This is experimental at this point. This is where the biggest holes were, and so I just figured I'd start here. Yeah, if it doesn't work, you can't always put trim over things, I you know, know, that's kind of why we have it. I'm talking to the camera right now, really. Oh. Reassuring our viewers at yeah, home. Yeah, don't worry. No, be worried, be very, very afraid. <laughs> we are. The Bondo did its trick, I sanded it, and then just a few spots I added um, some wood filler and then just kind of sanded it to a softer edge. So that's cool. And now I've done some taping and it's time to prime this thing. Okay, out of my paint clothes and in, back into my sweats. So keeping it classy, but um, I think tomorrow will be the official paint day because Mike is at the, uh, I guess, Home Depot right now getting the trim, maybe it's Lowe's, I don't remember. But we'll put all the trim on, the bottom and on the top. And then tomorrow we can paint everything. Um, I don't think we'll do it today. I guess we might get started, but I don't think so because I've got to bake some cakes for a church thing and make dinner because you know we eat food. So anyways, I can't wait to see this come together though. All right guys, it's actually been several days since we filmed this part of the video. We expected to take you all the way to the end, but the project was longer, more complicated, and it was just gonna be like an hour long video. So we're gonna break it into two parts. Um, it has been probably the most satisfying project we've done to date. And I'm so far holding true to my promise not to put things in um, for a week. I have three more days till I can put things in. Um, but thanks for coming along. Thanks for all of your tips. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Most of all, I hope... Let's wait till this plane goes by. I hope our videos like show you that people without a lot of experience and without an enormous budget can make the things that they want. <laughs> I don't know. That you just feel like maybe you can do stuff too. And I definitely hope that all of you out there, you homemakers, you home decorators, whatever, that you feel like a little bit more licensed to put whatever you want in your house. And I have to catch myself, sometimes I'll drive by a house and I'll be like, that door color is the worst. What were they thinking? Or like, 
a purple house. And I'm like, wait a second. You're the one who always says that everybody just always says the same thing and that people should just do what they love. So then I'm like, you're right. And they obviously love purple and they obviously love doors that are the totally wrong color with their brick. No, <laughs> just kidding. Say hi, Albus. Kitty. Yeah, okay. You got something on your face. You're not usually in our videos. You're usually too busy. The neighbors love you though. Anyways, so come back for our next video should be in just a couple days. Part two of making our fireplace built-ins. Can't wait. Love you guys. Bye.